Hello, and I have with me here, Ms. Lioso Njovu, who is the Group Head of Sustainability at Sibanye Stillwater. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Tolu. Uh, thank you for the invitation. My pleasure. Um, so just to start us off, I wanted to ask you, what are the critical steps for a low carbon just transition in the region? And can you highlight some of the initiatives like the Climate Ambition Accelerator, for example, that your company has identified to accelerate this transition? That's a really you know, important question um, in the context of, of an organization you know, such as ours. We are a mining and extractive industry player. Um, <clears throat> we are headquartered out of the out of Johannesburg, of course, out of the, the southern uh, Africa, south of the Sahara. Uh, but we're a global organization. We we have we're also listed on the New York uh, Stock Exchange. So so when you talk about just transition for us and the types of initiatives that we've had to undertake, it's been a myriad of initiatives really based upon how we see the challenges in each of our areas of jurisdiction. Um, when I talk specifically about our business uh, on the African continent um, and the work we are, we are doing in South Africa, um, yes, participating in the, in the Climate Accelerator has been one of those initiatives that we've looked at. And really, we looked at it as an opportunity to speed up a lot of the work that we were doing and find a mechanism to help us translate that into, into, into reality. But in addition to that, um, what we have done, um, I think, is to recognize that, in particular in South Africa, you need to be quite deliberate in the initiatives that you choose to undertake. And that deliberateness has got to translate into execution. Um, so the second initiatives for us that we've undertaken is a deliberate decision to move away um, from solely relying upon the national energy producer uh, named ESCOM in South Africa uh, for provision of, of, our, of our energy. Um, and that decision in itself, I mean, we're in the middle of procuring about 475 megawatts um, of alternative energy, which will be in the region of both solar um, and wind. And in a country like South Africa, where infrastructure is more than just the function of provision of energy. It serves a, an impact purpose and an impact outcome. What we found there is that in addition to accelerating what we needed to get done, it became an opportunity for us to also have multiple outcomes with the investments that we were making in a way that met not only the business need to move away from, from ESCOM, um, but also to, to speed up our contribution towards decarbonization um, and towards a reduction in emissions. In addition to that, uh, we, as I said, being a mining company, we, we are quite deliberate um, about the initiatives we would undertake in the US. The regulatory environment in the United States is, is, is very different. So the contributions that you make there for speeding up change really is about strengthening the industry. So part of what we're looking at now is our demand side management and to what extent can we use and leverage the power we have um, to make choices on who should be providing us with alternative energy and what type of substance sit behind uh, that organization. Um, the, the, as I said, the regulatory environment in the US is very different. So your, your points of acceleration are different and must be localized um, in order to, to, to add value there. Um, and then the second part of your question is, is about the just transition. And as I said, you know, I, the inequalities, what we have found certainly, is that where there are great disparities and inequalities in income is where we have the greatest amount of work to do. Because in truth, in areas where uh, not everybody has got access to energy, when you choose to undertake a 
a, an initiative that talks about provision of energy or that talks about the environment, your first consideration has got to be who is it going to affect the most? And it's going to affect the most people that don't have anything. So, so in areas where there are great inequalities, um, where you look at, for example, areas such as Brazil, uh, areas such as, as, as work on the African continent, where the disparities are so wide, your first consideration has to be a developmental outcome. So in other words, you have to be able to focus your work on transitioning in a way that does not leave people in a worse off position than they were before. Because the only people that is really going to affect are going to be those people that don't have, and they will have less of what they didn't have before. Uh, whereas for 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 you and I, if I was to be facetious, it you know it becomes a middle class problem, you know, um, and that's not something we can afford to do if we are talking really about development and about the impact of the work that we do. Um, so the just transition for us is making sure that you are clear on who is impacted by the decisions that you are that you are taking um, and recognizing that those inequalities um, have the potential for a very big impact on people unintentionally so at times um, but you ignore it at your at your peril uh, because those those issues are real when you're talking about people that have nothing that's very good. That's very good. So in a way, one could even say that your approach is keeping the SDGs in mind, especially when it comes to decent work, when it comes to eliminating poverty. So that's so that's a very interesting contribution that you've given us. Um, so um, I would like to then ask you, what are the main challenges and opportunities for companies in ambitious climate action? You know, what we've also found, and, and I think we've been quite quite deliberate at Sibanye about approaching these as a way to catapult our business into the next 10 or 15 or 20 years. Um, so in a sense, we really didn't take time to look at it as a challenge because actually what we saw uh, and, and, if, and even if you ask, ask yourself as a business person, you know, what does my business look like in 10 years or 15 years or 20 years time? And if that's your answer, then it changes completely the decisions that you take. So the opportunity for us has been to be able to make sure that the minerals and the metals that we produce feed directly the green economy. And that's what we've chosen to do. Um, we are specific that the next sigboing curve that we, we are supporting is about uh, provision of green energy. Uh, we started off as an organization uh, that uh, mined gold. Um, and even our mechanism for how we extracted that gold and how we deal with tailings around that, we, we have diversified into effectively recycling of gold and made that a fundamental part of our business. I think we must probably have the greenest gold um, in South Africa because of that, because we didn't see it as something that got in the way, but how do we invest in this um, so that we have a business beyond our tenure in the business? We've done that for, for tailings. Um, we've undertaken the same level of diversification in the United States and are building and have made a deliberate decision to increase our recycling of, of, of platinum um, as a critical part of our business. And what you'll find is that, is that as we begin to expand our capability into recycling of metals across our, our space, um, actually it becomes who we are um, and other people, we will recycle on behalf of other people in addition to our own, into our own metals. So this concept of not trying to approach this as something which has to be complied to, but understanding that actually it is in the uniqueness of what you do that will help your business be sustainable. When you talk about true sustainability, you know, and, and you look at it in its economic uh, context and its economic frame. It is about what is the economic role that your organization is going to play in the long term and what form does that take? So we've done that in the United States. 
um, we are we are doing that as well in in, in all of our um, entities going forward. And for us, it's been it's been the opportunity um, as our next uh, Sigborn curve. Uh, so yeah. Thank you. That's a very enlightening enlightening. Um, uh, the, the approach to the mining itself is actually going green. Uh, would you say that your model is something that that other mining and extractive uh, companies would li would likely follow or or take a look at? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that we 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 took a decision which we believed was in the best interest of our growth to be mm. an organization beyond today, and. Once that decision was taken, the question was then, how best do you do that in mm. a way that does not destroy value? I mean, we're an organization that whose role it is to be able to deliver value accretive growth. And for us, that value is not delivered only to our shareholders, it is delivered to our stakeholders as a whole. And once mm. we've got down that value chain, then the conversation was different. Mm. I mean, I do think that generally speaking, um, the the mining industry has really worked hard to understand its role in in society um and you will see us you will see i mean especially through um institutions such as the world gold council um and icmm um there has been a focus on deepening that understanding both on the socioeconomic benefits of mining uh, but also on the social aspects because of the influence that the industry has. Um, so what I think you'll find is that most people will look at it and will say, actually, there is logic. So in other words, there is nothing that is anti-business in, in what is being undertaken here. Actually, there's a synergy um, between the role that business can take, still deliver, uh, its commercial aspirations to be able to deliver value for those that have an impact on it, whilst at the same time using the strength um, that they have in a way that impacts more than one particular group of people. So yeah, I do think other people will will look at it and will you know will 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 kind of say, well, is this something we would like to do going forward? We hope so. We want to be leaders. Come follow. We don't mind. Wonderful. Thank you, and thank you all. We had. Ms. Loiso Njovu, the Group Head of Sustainability at Sibanye Stillwater. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tony, very much. Much appreciated.